Hello and welcome to this week's Coaching for Self-Belief podcast with uh, me, Pete, and Andy. Hello, Andy. Hello, Pete. All right. And uh, we're going to talk this week a little bit about mindfulness and the connection uh, between mindfulness and the inner game. So to start with, uh, we thought it would be good to go for a definition from John Kabat-Zinn, who uh, is one of the founders of making mindfulness popular in the Western world, uh, started back in the 1970s. And he came up with the mindfulness-based stress reduction program, which is famous now worldwide. And his definition is interesting from our point of view, isn't it? Because of its connection with the inner game. So uh, he defines mindfulness as paying attention on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally. That's right, Pete. So right yeah, off the bat. That kind of, it does resonate with inner game stuff, doesn't it, in a way? Um, and I know that Tim Galway, the originator of the inner game, be became very aware of what how awareness can um, uh, evoke change very naturally. And it's really about paying attention to objects. And the main object to pay attention to in tennis is obviously the ball but to do it in the present moment, non-judgmentally. Um, and, and some of the exercises we do might be looking at the spin on the ball, how much it's rotating, but it's attending to the ball, which is really keeping your attention on the ball um, yeah. without and trying. In our workshops where we get coaches on court um, doing awareness drills, really you could label them as mindfulness drills. Yeah, exactly. The we're, same. we're getting coaches to rally on court and, and then we're just asking them, you know, what do you notice about your body? What do you notice about the ball? You know, maybe helping them uh, zone in on a particular aspect of the ball, like what do you notice about the spin uh, or the trajectory? Uh, and then body awareness. What do you notice about relaxation in the body as you're rallying? That these are all questions that um, one of the things create mindfulness. Just for, yeah. Yeah. So, so one of the things that we've observed is how difficult it is to stay in the present moment. You know, um, a lot of coaches will find it difficult to keep their attention on the object non-judgmentally. So we know this from conversations we've had where people will say, oh, well, no, actually I lost my concentration or I was thinking about how to hit the ball. Um, and, it, and it is really getting to the ball. I was listening to John Kabat-Zinn talk about this and he said that um, the, the most important thing is the attending, which is how much of your attention can you keep on that object non-judgmentally and for how long? And we've always highlighted for people that focus follows your interest so mm. if there's something uh, about the what's happening during the rally that you're more interested in you know put your awareness on that and that's going to make it easier to stay stay with it if you like um, and yeah mindfulness exercise is very much about constantly bringing your attention back to the thing that you've purposely chosen to observe, yeah. if you like. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, you can do it off court, on court, in between points. And we were talking about in between points, weren't we? And you mentioned Shapovalov, didn't you, at the Australian Sh Open? Shapovalov, yes. Yeah. That uh, he very noticeably during the Australian Open uh, sat down at the changeover and closed his eyes and the out breath was very deliberate and you could tell straight away that he'd uh, managed to change his state and relax and that his attention was in the moment. He was, uh, you know, doing something that he practiced and that was useful for him um, to then, you know, start anew in the, in the next game. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. So it is a practice again that we say it has to be practiced awareness of the breath as well how how important is that yeah well it's funny because we were talking about connections with the inner game and obviously there's this really strong connection with uh, non-judgmental observation 
and how that can help someone when they're learning and when they're performing. Um, and also just the awareness side of it, which we've begun talking about, that in the inner game, the, the most famous inner game exercise is probably bounce hit. And really that bounce hit can be looked at as a mindfulness exercise, because if you say bounce when the ball bounces and hit when you hit, and then it goes the other side of the court, that you've got this constant uh, thing that's always changing. When When's the bounce gonna happen? When's the hit gonna happen? Your end of the court and then the other end of the court. So because it's always changing, it's in a way maybe easier for people to put their attention on it and keep their attention on it. Right? It's, it doesn't get quite so boring because you, you never know, you know, when exactly is it going to bounce? Oh, did I get it? Did I get it just right then? Did I say bounce exactly at the right time then? Yeah. And so, you know, your attention is, is easily occupied by that because of the constant variability. So now I think the connection to that, I, I just wondered, you know, what's the bounce hit of mindfulness? Mm. And we kept, we thought breathing, didn't we? And the, the go-to practice for mindfulness is awareness of your breathing. So we thought it would just be nice to highlight that for this podcast and, and to, you know, look at breathing awareness as a practice, that that's kind of the bounce hit of mindfulness because it's, you know, it's the same with bounce hit. You're, you're looking at something that's constantly happening and it's constantly changing. So you're observing it as it does that. And it's kind of interesting. Mm. And with breathing, it's the same thing. It's constantly changing, isn't it? Absolutely. And, and, and if, if the coaches, if you're wondering, you know, why it be mindful and, and why these exercises they, they bring you into the present moment and in the present moment that, that's all we have and also when you're in the present there, there isn't any um worrying about the future or the past and that's when we tend to perform at our best yeah so it, it allows yeah. uh, our onboard computer to to do what it does best without yeah. the interference of thinking about the past or the future if you can yeah. fill your bandwidth with what's happening here and now so these mindfulness exercises can be very helpful with that. And, you know, how, how many uh, of us as coaches uh, go on court and use awareness of breath on court? Uh, that that might be something if, if you don't do it much, just to remind you today, uh, or if it's new to you, you know, have a go to, as a wrap up. Uh, you know, go on court and ask your pupils when, as you're rallying, what do you notice about your out breath? Mm. Mm. Yep, that's a great exercise. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, um, is, is your out breath uh, something that that starts before contact and finishes when the ball bounces the other side of the net, or does it start on contact and finish when the ball crosses the net? So you, you can you can get people curious about their out breath and then there they are rallying and their awareness is, is on the out breath. So that's the mindfulness exercise. They're in the moment noticing what's happening now. Absolutely. And I'm just thinking about the one between points where you might want to just count the number of breaths that you take between each point. Just yep. let the breath happen and just pay attention to how many times that you breathe before you, from when you finish the point to when you start the next point. Yep. Yeah. And uh, for me, uh, we were talking earlier um, how I, I've developed, for me, uh, an exercise that really helps, which is to notice how many, uh, how many heartbeats I get for my in-breath and then how many heartbeats I get for my out-breath. Mm, that's, that's going quite fine there, Pete, but I'm sure and, with practice coaches can get there and if 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 you're one of those people that can easily notice their heart beating then mm. that can be something that's um, you, you know it, 
it occupies the mind very fully, very quickly. And it, there's, uh, what's interesting is that with the mindfulness exercise, there's no right or wrong. So there's the non-judgment. It's just noticing what's happening now. Mm. So between points, I, I would just be counting my, my heartbeat uh, for the in-breath and the out-breath and just noticing. And in doing that, there's, there's a sort of a calmness that comes with it. Mm. Just being in, in observation mode. Absolutely. So very useful little exercises. If uh, if you're one of those people that, that uh, finds it less easy to to notice your heartbeat, then you could just count. You could just uh, you know randomly count in breath, one, two, three, out breath, one, two, three, four, and then just carry on like that for a, just a small amount of time. Apparently there was a a study that was done which uh, found that one conscious breath has an instant impact on the on the physiology well it's interesting you say that pete because i've practiced meditation for about the last three or four years um well actually i i worked it up to i, I calculated it today and um from about 2014 to 2017 i probably meditated for about 30,000 hours to 40,000 hours. But the one thing that I can go to now, if it I- sounds like I, you, climb, you climbed Mount Everest with it. That sounds good. Yeah, fantastic. exactly. But when you <laughs> mentioned just the, the one single breath, so if I'm ever feeling a little bit of stress now, sometimes I've got to deliver to work in workshops to a number of coaches, or, or it could be just picking up the phone to talk to somebody, or it could be sitting down wanting to get into the moment, watching TV, watching a new drama, just one breath, just an inhale. It's almost like a, a default that I do now. Mm. Um, but, but again, all of these things take practice. And that took me a, a long, quite a lot of practice. Yeah. But, so to practice for ourselves as coaches, but yeah, also to yeah. encourage our students to practice these things so that, you know, in, in a match, they can use them and, and they're a bit more automatic and they can just drop drop into one conscious breath and that's going to help them stay on track. Mm -hmm. So I think ne next week we could actually go into some practical um, offerings for mindfulness for, for well, on the yeah, lots. Um, obviously you've got some takeaways go. this week. Yeah. Um, so hopefully you can have a little go with the breath and um, notice the breathing on the tennis court and see uh, what's actually happening. Um, when is it happening when you're hitting the ball? Um, and yeah, we can come back next week with some more practical exercises and, um, good luck. Good luck with the, the practice. Thanks for watching and we'll catch up with you next week. Very good. Thanks for watching. Bye.